diesel truck. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage. So, this evening's plan had kind of got a little away from me again. My original plan was to plug our harnesses and all that back in under the, the hood of the truck, get all that situated back right again and just kind of undo what we did before. Well, not undo, but just get that all in a good spot and try and start putting stuff back together. I feel like I just keep taking shit apart. Need to just start you know, getting uh, some positive movement and then later on we can rip other stuff back apart and just try and finish some of these little projects we're starting so we can get to the more important stuff on the back end of the truck here. That was the plan. Um, but I had that transmission harness already, well, pretty well disconnected. There was a couple odds and ends here and there. But, uh, so I got looking at it and tracing another wire back and needless to say. Here is the 68 RFE transmission harness. Um, well, that's what I'm calling it because that's what it's for, but there's a bunch of other stuff on it. Like here you have your four wheel drive indication for the uh, transfer case. This is for, I think it's for a fuel heater or something. That's something we don't have anymore. Um, this miscellaneous connector, we'll call it. These are all wires that we had already deleted off the 68 RFE that was in the truck. That transmission right there. These are all sensors, you know, pressure sensors, temperature sensors that were on the transmission that we had gotten rid of previously. Um, here's our main connector to the ECU ground and two other connectors that go towards the front of the truck. So as you can see, I kind of have the harness stripped back. Um, it all kind of started with this one right here because we did delete the pin out of the other side of this connector previously. So I said, oh, well, we can get rid of that and one thing led to another. <sighs> so this is where things kind of took a turn and where tonight's video is going. Uh, well, you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn today. So I got to fiddling with some stuff. We did have that 68 RFE info box. Well, you know, I'll get into that in a minute and I'll tell you what's going. So as I was looking at those wires, pulling those back so we could de-pin them from the harness, I did try and zip tie everything to keep it a little tidier. I got looking at the 68 RFE connector and just thinking, you know, do we really need all these wires just to have our reverse lights work and a reverse indication in the cab? Which I know is not necessary really for what we're doing, but I would like to have the lights work for now, just in case I want to drive it on the street a little bit. So that's where this comes in. This is our 68 RFE info box from Firepunk. Um, this is actually something they don't make anymore, or I imagine they don't, because now they have what's called the Porcupine, which allows every feature of your truck to work when you do a 48 swap. This is a predecessor to that. This is a very basic design. Um, has a ground, has a connector. I got a little uh, uh, jumper in there for right now. And Ground and a power, and then the connector for our neutral safety switch, a 47 style neutral safety switch. So what this box would allow you to do back then is basically you'd get your reverse indication giving you your lights, um, your camera, and whatnot. And the rest of the time truck would see neutral so you could still use like four low, start the truck, and all, all that. You'd still lose crews and uh, a couple other miscellaneous things. But the new setup they have doesn't do that. So anyway, I was after looking at that harness and seeing all those wires, I was kind of thinking, with as simple as this is, and there's only two wires to it, do we really need all those wires on the normal harness like here? So this thing's just held together, was held together with, ah, uh, uh, shit, with pop rivets. So I drilled the pop rivets out. And this is all that's really inside here. So this is the top of a 68 RFE valve body, as you can see right here. And I'll explain what this is all about here in a minute. Um, so all it is is that with a couple of soldered connections and a relay. So I got the diagnose in this thing, and that's kind of where this comes in. This is part of a 68 RFE valve body. As you can see, I cut it with a saw. Um, before I found out they made this box, or they might not have even been making it at the time yet, I actually got a valve body, um, I think this is actually a 45 RFE valve body, to try and figure my own way out to get the stuff to work. 
So in doing so, I found out that with a 68 RFE, this is how it tells what gear you're in. So park, reverse, neutral, drive, and there's actually a couple more, so I guess that'd be like D1, D2, you know, uh, like you have in your older stuff. So it actually takes a ground signal off of this plate onto these pins, which you can see here, these pins here. And that ground signal, or these five separate different ground signals, if you will, all mean something to pins on this connector. So as you can see here, you have plastic and you have metal. So right here you have, just as an example, metal, metal, plastic, plastic, plastic. So that would all equate to pins up here and the computer would see, all right, we got these three plastics or these four plastics and these two grounds. So you get two pins grounded out and that would give you your indication. Kind of uh a little bit unnecessary, especially when you look at how a 68 or how a 48 RE neutral safety switch is. This is just completely unnecessary as far as I'm concerned. So that got me thinking, like I said, I had kind of researched this previously to buying this box um, back a few years ago now. So that got me thinking, with that harness, can we just dumb it down to where we just have this one connector and don't even have the 68 RFE connector. I was talking about the plate and how, you know, the plastics and the metals, each of these corresponds to a certain connector in there. Um, I actually have them written down, but it's a different connector in each one of these. If we got our continuity tester, we can check them and you can find that one goes right there. So it just, Doing that, you can figure out which pin goes to which pin. Um, how this thing works is these two with the white wires are now permanently connected via this connection. And then you have this red wire pin here, which actually comes out of the relay. So when you hook or when you disconnect this relay here or connect it, it will change the position. So in one position of the neutral safety switch, the relay is powered. In one situation, it is not. And what that does is it either connects all three together or it just connects, you know, you just have two separate, the red and then the two whites. So those all correspond to a pin on this harness. So if we check right now with power to the unit and this connector not and this connector without the jumper in, we see that. Remember this is a ground based setup, put a ground there. All right? So I marked these with a marker. That one's grounded, that one's grounded, and that one's grounded. Now, clean this up put our jumper in so our neutral safety switch basically changes position and now that one's not grounded that one's not grounded so now our neutral safety switch has changed position so now that one's not grounded that one's not grounded and that one's grounded so I went through each selection on here and check the pins and basically this is what I get so park is pin 4 5 and 13 reverse is 5 so we are currently in a reverse, reverse position if we pull this jumper out and have these three pins connected again that will give us neutral, which is four, five, and eight, which is what we have. We have two next to each other and the one above it. And then if you want to drive, it'd be eight and nine. Nine's up here somewhere. And then drive two, we'll call it, be nine and 13. So here and up here. And eight and 13 would give you drive one, which are, should all show different indication on your truck. Like I said, just this little slide thing's giving it different, different grounds 
for each pin to decide what pin here gets grounded, sends a signal to the ECU. All very complicated. So all that bullshit means is that of this whole harness, we only need three separate wires. And they're the ones that I have zip tied off right here. So my thinking is I will get a, another connector like this, which I think you can get, I think that's the same as some Ford connector, Ford alternator connector or something like that. Cause I had, re had to replace this once already, um, stepped on it or some dumb shit. But anyway, I can get a connector, get another relay, and we can make this all go away, but our reverse lights and all on the truck will still work. So we're kind of reverse engineering this a little. And my thinking for getting another relay and you know, putting this back together is, you know, somebody out there might want to do a 48 swap and they don't need all the features, but they still want the reverse functions and they don't want to spend the money on a porcupine. So I figure maybe I can, you know, find somebody who is in that situation, wants to save a few hundred dollars and doesn't mind losing some options. So just trying to get some more money back for the uh, deconstruction we got going on here. I'm hoping that makes sense. Um, I know just trying to run through it, bugs, trying to run through it like that um, and not doing it yourself, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it. Um, there was a pin diagram I used on Sonics's website that tells you what each of these pins on here does. So that helped me kind of narrow it down and figure out, you know, which exact one I needed. But doing all this should eliminate more wires, more or less dumb shit underneath the truck and just make, you know, pulling in, pulling and putting in transmissions a lot neater, plus losing some weight and losing some bullshit. So like I said, guys, I really wasn't planning on making this video, but I figured, hey, somebody out there probably would find it of interest, especially knowing that that's how stupid and complicated it is for a 68 RFE truck to know what gear it's in. It's just, it just seems way over complicated. Like you got that whole rail, you got a bunch of mechanical parts. It just seems unnecessary to me. But that's why getting the functions to work in a 68 RFE truck with a 48 swap can be pricey if you want everything to work right. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was just kind of me rambling along, but uh, you see what I'm dealing with here. All these wires and bullshit and it's just making for late, not fun evenings in the garage. So I hope you guys enjoyed once again. Give it a big thumbs up. I'll check you on the next one. Get out in your garage. Get to working on your truck. Hopefully it's not fucking wires.